Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro where we continue our video user guide for APT by taking a look at the general settings. Now the settings dialog can be accessed in two ways. You can go to your tools tab and on the top right hand side here you have APT settings or you can use Alt S which will open the dialog for you. Um, now we're going to start up the top right here with your profile management and setups. Um, I've recently done a video on this so I've linked that in the description and you can have a look at that uh, if you need more details. But basically uh, from the drop down list here you can select the profile you want to work on. I generally don't do this. Um, if I want to work on a particular profile I will start APT with that profile and work on it directly as I'm always worried I'm going to uh, do something that might screw up another profile that I'm using. Um, save is to save any changes you make to the profile and under the management uh, simply you can create a new profile based on the currently selected profile you can rename a profile the current profile to something else you can reset it by overwriting it with another profile um, and you can delete profiles as well from in here and that's your basic management of your uh, profiles if you make any changes to the, to a particular profile that you got selected here, you just hit save and it will save those changes. But next we're going to move on to having a look at the main screen and what changes you can make there. So the first tab in settings is your main um, and this is just a general setup for your system. Uh, you can set the sin, the, sin, the skin color to what you want, you have a number to select on. Um, if you're somewhere where you get like me, it might be at a star party or something, you definitely don't want bright white or, or even light grey. Uh, maybe the red will be a better selection in that situation. Um, then you have your change the icon colour. And what happens here is if this is selected, the icon you get on your taskbar for down here uh, will change colour to match the skin you have selected. And uh, if you're running multiple cameras at once, that can come in handy to distinguish between which instance of APT is for which camera. Uh, your status panel position, um, generally I'll just leave that on auto. This is your panel here on the left on auto if you have a 16.9 screen or a large screen it'll put it on the left if you're running a 4.3 screen it will be along the bottom here just above your log file um, you can leave it on the default and it will automatically or you can select where you want to put it so it permanently goes there and you have your language support uh, auto will just use your window settings but you have Japanese and simplified and traditional Chinese you could choose if you need to uh, I just leave it on auto uh, the old style interfaces isn't something you really want to get into. Um, that's various features that worked back with, I think, Windows 7, maybe Windows 8, but it does cause issues in Windows 10 and later, so just leave that off for now. Uh, you can permanently enable or disable your tooltips, but I le leave that to the tooltip button up here when I want them off. Um, while doing these, I turn it on and off all the time, so I'll just leave it for now. Uh, hide the folders, oh, sorry, no image in the uh, thumbnails for the image browser. Um, generally, if you're using the image browser, you want the thumbnails, so <laughs> I just leave that off. Uh, you can hide the folders as well. Um, it, what it'll do is it hides these folders, and uh, you need to actually click through your folders here to select which folder you want instead of having them show up like this. Um, ascending folders by default the naming of your folders is done uh, descending so T comes before um, the numbers so it actually sorts it that way you can change it round I actually do prefer it changed round so I'm going to check that for now uh, so I can switch that around um, you can put in your observer name if you enter a name here it will be stored in the fits header so it's up to you whether you want to do that I put it in but I'll put mine in later so I can do that I'm not going to worry about these two here because they're more to do with this part on the right here but uh, next we have the next button we have is 
uh, export the log file. So if you ever go to the forums with a problem and someone tells you to post the log file, simply click on that button and you can name it, put it where you want, uh, and it'll save the log file that you can then post on the forums. Um, then you've got backup and restore settings. Uh, backing up settings, the main settings will, gen will back up your general settings only. If you do a master backup, besides the general settings, it will back up from the object browser your custom uh, list and your to-do list, as well as if you use them, um, the what are they? The checklists as well. It'll back them up as well. Just to note, if you back them up using the restore, doesn't re uh, inst re store them you need to go into the actual object browser or the checklist and import them back into there but generally you what you'll be doing is only the main settings and that's fine um, you can click OK it'll give you a file name and everything else you can change that uh, there's a default config that's one I did earlier in another video uh, in that was in the profile video you can see that to see how I did that but I'm not going to do it right now now restore settings is a similar thing uh, be sure you're in the right profile that you want to overwrite if you're going to restore them. Um, I'm going to click yes here because I'm not actually going to do it. But what happens is APT creates its own restores up here um, and it'll create a longer list as it goes down. And uh, this other backup file is if you want to import a file that you've backed up previously. And that'll be right down the bottom here once you've used APT a few times. Then you just click on OK, it'll open up, you find the file you want to overwrite the current one with and then you'd open it. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, live view automation as it says in the tooltips uh, enables or disables the live view automation. Um, what it does it tries to tweak your live view so it's more sensitive. Um, your maximum ISO you want to use for it you can set there. Um, mirror lockup automation uh, it doesn't hurt to have it checked but really uh, if you're using a DSLR you're not likely to be using mirror lockup anyway it's really no good if you're taking images any longer than two or three seconds because uh, then by then any mirror vibration is not going to make much difference to the data you'll get if you've got an old DSLR and need, need one of these uh, shutter cables you'll need to enable that but that's only for the really old ones and I don't know if there's many people using them anymore then you have your image path for your storage of your image files um, if you've got it set to store to your PC and you can browse to a, a folder and create it or whatever um, I'm not going to change that at the moment I change that based on focal lengths and everything else so I'll do that later um, for in each individual profile I create uh, five profile grouping that's the folders underneath your default path um, so in that camera number um, you can't change that you've always got to have the camera number then I have object name the date I'm imaging again you always need that uh, the camera number cannot be moved from its position you can't move it down or up but the date is one that has to be there but you can um, I think you can remove it you know you can remove date but it is recommended to keep it so but I keep it up there so I know what date I'm imaging anyway um, for my folder name I have focal length and the camera name that's how I do mine so it's the camera number the object name the date I imaged uh, the focal length I imaged at and the camera name that I imaged it with so that's what I use in there um, and then it's down here you will see the information what I'm going to have that's just a sample of what would come so I'd have the images then I'd have the camera number the object date the focal length I'm using and the uh, camera name so if I image with more than one camera on one night they will be in separate folders uh, the next part is your name parts and this is um, the actual name of the files themselves each individual file uh, you can do what you want here um, I covered this in setting up a profile anyway uh, if you want to have a look at that video but uh, there's lots on the left there you can add put them on the right and select what you wanted to have this is what I have and I'm happy with that so <coughs> oh sorry about that next is allow spaces in file and folder names 
so if you've got a space in in one of your naming parts or um, like your object name if you include that in your path or in the file uh, name you can have a space if you have this checked if you don't have this checked instead of a space you'll get underscores um, hopefully it's all fixed there was a couple of versions earlier that it wasn't working quite right hopefully it's all fixed now I haven't had a chance to test it if you use PixInsight you can create WBP friendly file names I don't use it so I don't need to even worry about that one um, on APT the tooltips there are on the website available different languages and you can download them and import the, the tooltips in the language you require but uh, that's it for the main tab and next we'll move on to the CCD tab. So next up is the CCD tab which is for your CCD and CMOS cameras. Um, first off up the top here you have your colour fits preview. Now this is if you want have a one shot colour camera and you want to see a colour fits preview. Naturally enough so you click on that. Then you need to select from here the appropriate Bayer pattern for your camera. Uh, most of them are RGGB but some of them you may need to have um, a different one so check your camera specific specifications to see what you might need um, and the next one is your store by a pattern this is if you want to turn off the color fits preview um, I would say no for now this stores the Bayer pattern in the uh, fits header so that when you go into um, your program your stacking program it will know it's a color image this is one reason I suggest storing um, having different profiles for a color and a mono camera because if you accidentally leave this checked or have it checked it will store the Bayer pattern and your stacking program will likely think your images are color images with three channels rather than monochrome so that's just something to be careful of uh, hide your locations in your fits header if you never share your fits files then you can have your location stored in it it won't worry but if you do share them and it's your home location or whatever uh, you may want to disable that so that people don't know exactly where you are um, auto connect your camera please self-explanatory yes you want that on um, if you have problems with your dedicated camera you may want to have a higher comp compatibility but that's only needed if you are having problems um, disable the exposure minimum check some cameras uh, in the drivers they have a minimum exposure length set um, the camera is capable of going faster but they won't let it and this can cause issues if you're trying to do flat frames it won't allow you to get down to a required uh, time you need to do exposure length to do a flat frame so leave that checked um, auto populate the CCD profile that's here in your object calculator down the bottom it will auto get the readings from the camera and auto fill that in and that's a good thing so you leave that um, these are all uh, personal choice now remember your binning between sessions uh, good idea saves you resetting the binning each time uh, and remember gain during between settings again I leave that on it's up to you now manage gain you want that enabled uh, simply because if you don't have that enabled uh, any gain you have set in the camera tab or if you go into your tools and into your uh, filter wheel um, any you have in here it won't be able to use them um, it'll only be able to use what you already have set in the driver so manage gain allow that the advanced CCD settings you're unlikely to ever need any of these so I wouldn't play with them um, especially B0 unless you have a very very good reason for do it um, one you may have if you have a QHY camera and you're having problems with live view you may need to do that but um, other than that I wouldn't touch these if you want to read a little bit more about them see the uh, written guide and it can help you out there and see if you want them so cancel that one uh, the D Bayer channels this is the scaling factor for your red and blue channels uh, green has always has a scaling factor of one um, and you can adjust the red and blue channels just so you can have a look and get a better look of your image uh, that's personal choice so when you've got one uh, a color camera connected and you've, you're doing the color previews you can just fool around with these and see what works best for you it's the same with the auto stretch when you when you have your histogram up and you hit the auto stretch button this is just the factor it uses to stretch it you can change that to, to suit what you need um, 
the next one is your, your limit binning and this is some camera drivers have high binnings that you can't or you never will likely be to use and you can set the maximum binning you need uh, in here I don't have that problem my cameras have uh, my one shot color is a, is a planetary camera it only has two uh, one by one and two by two and my 294mn has up to four by four so and it doesn't list any extras that I don't have now these are only the ones in your cam tab when you have a, uh, a CMOS camera if you click on your your binning levels down here you'll get a list of the binnings and if you've got a long list you can limit it down to what you want to use the cooling delta this is used for when you do use your camera cooling um, it's just how close to the temperature that you you've set your camera level at it has to be for it to be considered at that level um, some cameras need this a bit higher but 0.6 of a degree is fine for me so as long as it's within, within 0.6 of a degree the camera will be considered at the correct level uh, correct temperature level um, stop initial auto cooling uh, when you connect your camera it by default they automatically go in to try and start cooling um, I'd leave this checked uh, simply because the way the camera cools by leaving it to do it by itself um, isn't very good for the camera at all uh, it's not controlled in any way it can lead to condensation and building up in the camera and you're better off using a using the cooler um, in APT to cool it in steps so you, it works better uh, pause cooling during image read this is only really necessary on uh, some S big cameras, so I'd leave that unchecked unless your camera actually requires it, uh, which is unlikely to, to, to happen unless you have the specific S big cameras. Uh, open cooling aid on camera connection. This just pops open the cooling aid when you first connect your camera. Uh, it just saves you going to the cooling aid button down the bottom and then going to it it'll just pop up and you just click start that's up to you personal choice um, I do enable it when I set up a profile because I'm currently using a DSLR profile or maybe I should be doing all this in my um, mono setup no because of the changes I've made so there we go there um, warming a target offset uh, oh sorry use external um, focus the temperature yes so if you have a uh, either a uh, focusing motor with a temp sensor or one of the other supported temperature sensors um, it will use the temperature when it sets things up for the warming aid and then you have your offset for the warming aid so this is the temp difference between the ambient temperature and the camera temperature it's going to try and get to for uh, when it warms the camera um, like if it's you leave it at five five to ten seconds ten degrees is fine um, if you leave it at five um, say the ambient temperature is 15 it will try and get your camera to 10 and that's just that what that is so it's a difference between the ambient temperature and the target temperature when you try and warm um, do you want it to check for the camera temperature on plan start uh, I generally have this um, done that way when you start a plan if you're not at the set temperature you have here it will warn you that it's not at the temperature and ask if you want to continue with your plan um, I don't go as low as minus 20 but I go generally minus 5 and I'll set minus 4 here so if the camera's not at least at minus 4 it won't start the plan without asking do I want to start it then you have the camera name this is the name that you can give the camera it's what will appear down the bottom here uh, in your file names and everything else so you can specify which camera you're using at that particular time and uh, that's again personal uh, for you the image ID this is a list of a uh, number of images from your uh, camera um, you can reset it back to zero um, but that's the ones that are used in your file name as well so it just resets the image ID counter that's all and that's it for the CCD panel uh, next it's going to be time to move on to the summary panel. so not much to do on the summary panel uh, quite simply you have very little choice this is just for this panel here uh, you can select what parts you may or may not want to have showing on there <coughs> again personal choice and another one that has is this is auto redirecting um, just a second I'll get back into this because I don't want to save any changes that I've done there um, yes so 
I'll go back into it again. Um, so basically, what that is is if you, if you check that one there and click OK. Now, what happens now is when you mouse over one of the sections, it will open the tab for the appropriate section. So the camera part at the top, it changes to the cam tab. And when you go away, it goes away. The gear goes to the gear. Same with guiding or go to the gear. And if you go to the more button on your tools tab, it opens up the tools tab. I don't like that behavior. So that's one reason I uh, disable that because I don't like it but um, yeah, you can just select your whatever you want and that's and that's the summary tab done there's nothing else to say on it so next we have the temperature and sky um, this is up to you what you set in here what format you want your temperatures in um, refocus every XXX degrees that's a warning if you have a temperature sensor connected with your temperature up here um, it will warn you as it approaches them if you're doing auto focus you don't really need to worry about that but if you're going to have to manually focus uh, it will warn you by starting to flash and everything else that you're getting close to a temperature and same with the dew point um, your temperature calibration if you're, uh, you think your temperature sensor is wrong or off slightly you can set it uh, to calibrate so your temperatures are, are slightly different to what they sh the, your sensor is reading uh, then you have your type of sensor or no sensor um, only if you have the temper or temper hum you don't need to worry about these if you have the supported one there at the moment um, sky quality tracking that only works if you've got one of these sensors that work with um, sky quality uh, so you need to set them if you have a, a uh, an eagle with an eye on the front or the rear or use a an sq meter from um, uni hedron hedron uh, they go in there um, i don't have one so i don't need to enable it but that's pretty much all there is on the temperature and sky one as well very short those ones so next we move on to the location tab and this again is very self-explanatory uh, you pick your hemisphere you need uh, if daylight savings in effect or you can choose auto and then you've got your list of locations you want um, you need to set your locations for, for pretty much everything to work in APT so I'd leave that set um, to rename a location all you do is you simply select the location you want and then in this box you type the name and it will change the name of the location then you need to set your location uh, in these two boxes here, your latitude and longitude, and you can use it um, however you want. You can you do it as uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, and point seconds, or you can use a decimal. So when I did the mine, I just ended minus 36, um, or you can do the full one if you want. Same here, minus uh, sorry 151. Um, as long as you enter minus, it'll know you're in the southern hemisphere. Uh, a lot of some people do make a mistake with that and get in the wrong hemisphere your elevation is your elevation your time zone is your default time zone from UTC um, I'm in Eastern Australia which is plus 10 if you're to the other side of the the uh, meridian the prime meridian um, say in the US it'll be a minus number and uh, make sure you get that right. I've, we've recently had someone who had theirs around the wrong way and it causes all sorts of problems with meridian flips. Um, if you're using narrowband especially, you can have an astro twilight offset um, because using narrowband you can actually image a bit longer, start a bit earlier and image a bit later than what you can with a uh, one-shot colour camera. And I use 20 minutes for mine, so it doesn't worry me. I could use nautical twilight, that would work as well. Uh, show location in your main screen uh, what this does is up here it'll show your location next to the profile you're using so I've got not home so it's got not home up there <clears throat> and then you can synchronize the settings with your mount if you want to you can export them to the uh, use them only in APT you can import them from your uh, drivers or you can export them to them. Um, I export and generally people will export and you can export the PC time as well. 
there's a little bit of a problem at the moment I'm having with that if you can see down here in my log cannot set UTC time exception occurred um, trying to work that one out at the moment but hopefully that won't take too long and I can get it sorted but um, it's a good idea to have the export coordinates set um, depending on your driver you may need to set the driver up to be able to accept the coordinates um, in EQ ASCOM from EQ mod you have to set up allow site rights um, otherwise it won't accept the information and once you do that by just setting your location in here it will automatically be set in your mount as well at the same time and I know Ivo I've spoken to him previously uh, I know at least in Stellarium you can export the, your location to Stellarium as well and if you can get that working then you only need to set your location in APT and both your planetarium and your uh, mount driver will have the same location uh, without having to go through them all but that's it for the location tab starting to move through them pretty quick here which is good so next up we have our scope and focus of settings um, again pretty straightforward most of this auto connect your scope if you wanted to auto connect when you start up uh, auto hide the meridian clock and what this is if you had this selected and there's no mount connected uh, the meridian flip clock here will be hidden um, pretty basic mount connects it's going to be there uh, I think my mount is connected is it yeah it is that's why the clock's showing at the moment I wasn't sort of expecting that I didn't think of it um, then you have your above horizon check keep that because you know if you're going below the horizon you're not going to see anything anyway and generally most mounts will have uh, mount limits set at the horizon unless you've disabled them uh, I don't like disabling mount limits so I'll leave that checked if you have an LX200 mount you may need to check this one to get it working properly uh, low level pause over after go to's what happened is some mounts will actually report they've finished um, a slew uh, when they actually still got a little bit to go so this just gives it a couple of extra seconds to make sure the mount has finished slewing for real uh, these are your scope speeds for when you're using the um, buttons in your gear tab by default um, APT uses one degree per arc second oh, sorry one minute per arc second sorry one minute per second when you're using the fast speed and one arc second per second when you're using the slow speed you can change these up so it can go faster if you want it to uh, your scope name this is be used in fits headers and file names uh, you can set that there if you like um, and that can be whether it's the actual scope or your mount name take whichever you like uh, the mount tracking watchdog that's something handy to have a uh, recent addition to APT and what that is it monitors your mounts tracking and if for some reason your mount doesn't move enough in 60 seconds it will start warning you that your mount's not moving enough um, because the mount should move in 60 seconds and it could be something wrong you could be a snag or something going on not only letting your mount move uh, it doesn't work when you get above about 85 degrees uh, towards the zenith because once you get near the meridian up there it's uh, mount moves very very slowly but it's a good thing to have on just to make sure your mounts working uh, another thing you need you may need is pause guiding on focus or move this is really only relevant if you have an off access guider because um, if you have an off access guider and your focus starts moving it's going to play havoc with the guiding so if you have an off access guider definitely set that if you're uh, using a focus motor <coughs> sorry about that on the right hand side is your auto focus auto connect your focuser if you if you need to so you may want that if you have a focuser connected um, if you have a mead focus uh, check that one because um, that'll add to your auto star here uh, so it connects up and works with your auto star if your focuser has a humidity sensor not a temperature sensor a humidity sensor uh, you will check that now this part here is for trying to control backlash I will go into that in a lot more detail in another video soon um, but make finally inwards move this is just a generic way to help control the backlash to a level um, 
generally if you set this it does give you some control over the backlash and you set it's you know maybe 250 500 750 steps and what happens then is your mount on an outward move will move an extra whatever the distance you have here an extra number of steps out and then come back to the position you want it doesn't solve the issue of backlash but it does help control it uh, but i'll cover that in another video soon uh, you can reverse the focuser moves, so we send reverse orders to your focuser. Um, this doesn't work if you're using uh, final in well, well, it does work, but uh, your final in move doesn't work with it from what I've tested lately. Um, I'll have to look into that one more. It only works if you go in and set it in the driver, so I'll have to test that more. If you know the backlash of your uh, focuser, you can set the amounts in here. Um, but if you don't I wouldn't start playing with these again when I go into my uh, backlash video soon I'm going to go into a lot of detail about all this uh, use <coughs> pardon me uh, um, use APT position counter uh, if you want to hide the backlash moves from the focus of position counter uh, you can use that um, it's not something you generally use flop correction if you've got an SCT or an RC or a, um, a, Ma a Mac camera um, you can define a value for uh, accounting for the flop of the mirror if you need to um, it's generally only in one direction and uh, you'll need to make sure you know what you're doing when you set that up uh, emulate focus of position some <coughs> If you doesn't have a focuser, it's generally an older focuser that doesn't support positions, uh, you may need to emulate that through there. Generally today, fo uh, focuses are real focuses with proper um, mode drive motors and everything else, and they will record their own positions. Uh, remember the position between sessions, that becomes with your emulated position, um, whether you want it remembered between sessions if you're using the emulation and the emulation size step size per position again that's only relative to this then you have backlash aid um oh sorry no i'm not going to go into that at the moment um this is something that's a little bit handy for different things maybe not for actually doing the backlash but for making some calculations and that again that's something i'll go into in my backlash video which is coming up soon okay so that's it for the scope and focuser tab so next up is the filter wheel tab and this is a fun one um, i'm going to start on the right hand side here um, so first of all do you have a moravian instruments filter wheel do you check that auto connect yes if you have one you'll probably want to do that um, if you have a manual filter wheel or filter draw you can click click yet there and then you can set it to pause for manual change um, and what will happen there is if you have a manual one um, and you've set a different filter at somewhere in a plan or whatever it will actually pause put a pop up and tell you you need to change your filter you go do it come back and click OK and away you go again um, so that's quite handy if you have a manual one uh, I'm glad I've got an electronic one now so it makes life so much easier but I used to have a manual and do it that way um, and connect check for connection on plan start so if you have a plan that needs filters it will check at the start of it to make sure you have your filter wheel connected uh, otherwise it'll pop up a message warning you um, so that's it for that part now on the left here allows you to name and set various uh, features for your focus uh, for your filter wheel so you can choose the names of your filters and what positions they're in um, the focus offset for you for your focusing with autofocus um, you can actually use for autofocus aid to determine these um, or you can do it manually slow way uh, the default gain if you have a default gain you want to use with a particular uh, filter this is used in various areas like your plate solving and that um, the exposure length for autofocus with each filter and the uh, plate solving exposure length um, so these are all set you can set for your various filters and uh, APT will use them in uh, as they need 
Um, just remember that for the gain, you need to set up for uh, manage gain in your CCD, otherwise it will not work and they will be ignored. So they're just general settings you can have for your uh, filter wheel. And that's the filter wheel done. Mm, really ripping through these now. Okay, this sound tab's not going to take us long at all. Uh, you can enable or disable the sounds permanently. Um, again, I just use the button up here. I usually turn them off. Um, you can actually change the files for your particular sounds to something you want. Um, you can reset it. Uh, you can pick one and tell it to play it. There you go. So you can go to one. Um, you can import sound packages. You can export the sounds you've got. Uh, you can decide whether you want a male voice or a female voice. And uh, reset all is just a reset all button. So that's it for the sounds. You can pick your own sounds to do whatever you want. But um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the sounds one done. I knew that one wasn't going to take long. Okay, so next up is our planetarium. Um, if you use one, you use one. If you don't, select none. Um, these are the uh, ones that are supported by APT. Uh, so you can pick whichever one you're using. Um, I use Stellaria. It's set up by default. That's the correct ports and everything else I need for it. Um, and with Stellarium, you can actually specify a default uh, sensor and telescope to use in it for image scaling and for uh, previewing and that and APT will match that one so if your your first sensor is O and your first telescope you use is O um, so your first one like if I did this on mine now the sensor would be my 294mm and the telescope would be my uh, 712 my 102mm F7 um, it'd be set there so that's all you need there um, it's not going to connect it because the simple fact that uh, I don't have it running at the moment. But whether you have it running or not, it doesn't hurt to have it selected anyway because it'll just pop up a message telling you it can't connect to it. And that's fine there. But that's just stellar, st uh, planetariums. If you want to use one, you use one. If you don't want to use one, you don't use one. As simple as that. Uh, you do need to configure them to be able to connect and, and be worked with by APT but it does come in handy for uh, you know for setting up targets and and framing targets because you can import and export the data from them which is quite handy so next we're going to move on to our advanced tab so the advanced tab is just somewhere where you've got a couple more settings you can go through um, if you want to delay your plan starting by a particular time up to 60 seconds you can do that um, zero seconds most people will use now your live stack count um, this is for using a live stack in your uh, live view you can stack images and that's how many images it'll do it's up to you um, if you're using a PC to store your data of course with a uh, dedicated camera you will be uh, with a DSLR you may or not, may not be but it'll check how many megabytes of space you, you've got left on your storage so it's basically default setting is if it's got less than 4 gig you will um, give you a, a warning um, so it depends on how much it needs uh, camera low space that's your card in the camera as I don't save to the card I've always got a plenty of room on that one uh, the camera battery, if you're running off a battery, I run mine off a dummy battery. And just remember, if you've got a dummy battery that has a USB connection, make sure it's got a dual USB connection. If not, go out and get yourself a Y cable, because a single connection will not power enough, uh, give enough power to the battery for the camera to work properly. You need to plug it into two USB ports to get the required voltage. So that's your battery limit level for your battery in your camera um, the PC battery that's if you're using a laptop and running it off battery again it gives you a warning um, if you're using an audio trigger this is a delay I don't use one so I can't tell you exactly how that's going to work but uh, I don't know many people who do now extreme extreme OS, uh, yeah, uh, extreme EOS shutter delay for when you're getting down into really fast um, images, 
that you're trying to save to your camera um, it can cause problems when you get really fast images going and this is just the delay for the shut up between images to give your camera time to catch up uh, you'll maximize over Astro Tortilla if you're using it um, so that's the maximum ISO it will use uh, DSLR histogram stretch factor um, this is again going to be personal choice when you hit the auto stretch in your DSLR histogram this is how much it goes by I was testing this out earlier today and it seems quite funny uh, 0.40 seems to does do little for mine but 0.41 it stretches the hell out of it so I really don't know what to what to set there at the moment uh, well keep testing uh, the profile selection timeout when you have multiple profiles you will get a drop down list when you start APT and this is just how long it'll wait before automatically starting the last profile you used um, with the profile list if you click on it it stops the timer anyway so you can set that to what you want if you really only have one profile if you might have multiple profiles defined but if you really only have one profile you could set this down for a second and just let it go into the same profile each time or quickly catch it when you need to change it uh, here you select how your folders are treated uh, for the time of day um, I do suggest leaving it new folders after midday otherwise if you have it after midnight um, at midnight you're halfway through an imaging session and it starts putting all the images in a different folder it's quite a pain so I just leave it till after midday um, you don't want to use this at all bigger fonts if you're using an older one on um, on a small screen laptop I've never used it so I can't really say that advanced flats and bias plane plans this is for um, especially with DSLRs that allows you to specify your times and everything yourself by default APT uses AV mode to take uh, your flats and biases um, so it'll take it at what it finds to be the correct one but uh, you can by doing this one you can set the the exposure time and everything yourself uh, auto connect your DSLR is good to have uh, remember image effects this is from your imaging tab and the preview effects um, that'll be up to you whether you want to do it or not um, if you want it to remember it between sessions or not uh, if you have a DSLR Nikon or Canon connected you can convert the uh, CR2s to NEF um, but the raw file is not deleted it only creates a copy of it so just be warned with that it will increase the uh, amount of disk space you need for saving images um, don't remember object name between sessions I do this because it's not often I'll uh, have two immediate sessions on the same target sometimes I do but I still like to set up the object name myself at the uh, beginning of a session otherwise um, I might forget to change it when I do change targets now ask for object name is on the start of a plan when you click start it will ask you to name the object um, I don't need to do that but uh, there you go um, does not work yeah don't use in combination with commands or scripts or automation will not work unattended so there you go don't try that um, don't sync the DSLR camera clock it's an idea to have them sync so they're all working together as long as your system clocks right but if your system clocks not right other things won't work properly anyway so do that an RPD mouse fix a remote desktop if you're having problems with the mount um, with the mouse sorry I don't have any problems with it so I can leave that uh, determine focal length if you're running a DSLR with a lens you can check this and when you take the first image it will get a reading from the camera and lens as to what the focal length is uh, if you're going to be using this with a telescope that doesn't have any way to report the focal length to the camera disable this otherwise you're wondering why your uh, plate solving that isn't working it's because it'll put in the wrong uh, focal length I think it defaults to 50 millimeters or something and if you're using a seven or eight hundred millimeter long uh, telescope that's not going to work so disable that for a telescope with a DSLR enable it if you're using a, ca a camera and lens that can support telling uh, the camera what focal length you're using if you have a uh, Nikon camera you may want to use this I don't have Nikon so I don't have to worry about it 
Now, a Luna, Luna Tico uh, GNS is a it's a uh, app for your phone that you can get that monitors uh, what's going on with your system. Um, with your imaging and APT and if there's a problem it reports it to that um, I don't have it it's not a cheap application to get but you may want to use it because it monitors your system and by checking this it will uh, allow you to send the details to your phone if something goes wrong so I can let you know on your smartphone if there's any events going on that you might need to know about and the final thing is uh, disable key singing. I do that because I never use key singing anyway. So that's just my personal choice again. And the last thing I haven't mentioned is down the bottom, you would have noticed on all the pages, is settings, uh, settings marked with a star require a new uh, restart before they come into effect. So that's everything from changing your skin color and things like that. Um, that'll only happen when you restart your... Um, APT. But that's it for the settings. Um, I think I'll end it here. I'll say thank you for tuning in again. Wishes all clear nights and take care. Bye.